We're now ready to discuss the patch tool, or as I like to call it, the eye bag removal tool. Of course, you can do a lot more with it than just remove eye bags. What the patch tool is good for is removing or fixing up large areas. It works very similar to the healing brush, except number one, it's not a brush, and number two, you don't have to alt click to set a source point. So let's open up a couple images and I'll show you how it works real quick and then I'll go back and explain it. We want to open up number one and number four here. And when those are open, we close the mini bridge and come over here to number one. And I'm going to zoom in 100%. So I'll double click that zoom tool. Get them holding down my space bar so I get the temporary hand tool. And I'm going to bring this over. Now the patch tool is located here with the healing brush, spot healing brush, etc. There we have the patch tool. And let me just show you how it works really quick and then I'll come back and explain it. Let's say that I want to get rid of this eye bag. The way the patch tool works is that you select the area that you want to fix up, or I say select the bad. And once you have a selection, you can put your cursor over it. See, it's one cursor when you're off the selection, and it becomes another cursor when you're on the selection. And what you do is you click and you drag that selection to an area you want to replace your selected area with. Or as I say, drag it to the good. So you select the bad, drag it to the good. The only catch is that you have to have a good area large enough to fit the selection in there. Now, if I were to drag it over onto the mole, you can see that the mole will actually appear in the area that we're trying to fix up. Sometimes you can't avoid such things. But what you could do at that point, if you were actually to let go now and saw the mole now where the eye bag was, well, you could get the healing brush and remove that. But in this case, I've got plenty of room to drag it right below here, let go, and we took the bad and replaced it with the good. Now, like the healing brush, it's not a pixel for pixel replacement. It's going to take the texture from the area that we drag it to, but it's still going to use the color and the shading from the original area, and it's going to attempt to blend it together. I just click to deselect it, and you can see our result. Now, this is not a good touch-up. I'm going to show you how we can make this a more believable touch-up, and the reason I say this is not a good touch-up is because everybody has a little bit of an eye bag when they smile. Remember I mentioned that Lancome ad with Julie Roberts and there was another model in there. They got rid of the eye bags completely. I saw the, uh, the pictures and of course Julie Roberts is smiling. I don't care how young and beautiful you are, you always have a little bit of an eye bag there. What would be nice is if we could get rid of the eye bag except for just a little bit. So there's just a little tiny crease down there. The other problem is you see we got rid of the crease but we still have the dark area here. And if you remember from the lesson on the dodge tool, that's where I said once you get rid of the eye bag, you still end up with the darkness that was there. Use the dodge tool to go over it to lighten it up. Now I'm going to hit Control Z, Control Alt Z a couple times, and now we'll explain what's going on here. First off, let's take a look at the options. As we see, there is no brush. We do have these options up here, which is the regular selection, add to the selection, delete from the selection, or intersect with the selection. Forget about all these, just use new selection and leave it on that. The idea behind this is if you draw a selection and don't get it exactly the way you like it, you could hit add to the selection and wherever it intersects, it'll add that onto it or delete from the section, it'll cut that out. Now the reason we don't need any of these, first off, there's keyboard shortcuts that you could use. And secondly, we're not drawing complicated selections here. They're just circles or some other type of easy shape. So it's just as easy if you draw it wrong, just click to deselect. Let me grab that one back. Just click somewhere, deselect, and draw it again. So if you messed up here, I got some of those eyelashes. Instead of coming up here and trying to take away from that selection, just deselect and then draw it again. It's just as quick. Now when you start making complicated selections, you don't want to start all over again just because you made a little mistake. So in lesson 11, we will be adding and deleting from selections. With the patch tool, it's just as easy to start all over again and trying to alter that original selection. I have never, ever, with the patch tool, done anything but just start over. The next option here is what do we want to do with the patch? Are we selecting the source or the destination? I say select the source. By selecting source, you saw that we circle the bad and drag it to the good. Now, if we choose destination as our patch, what we have to do is actually draw around a good area 
and drag that up onto a bad area. And you see it disappears there. The problem with this is that you have to make sure that you draw a shape around the good area that's going to match up to the bad area. If you don't, like right up in here, you'll end up missing part of the bad area. Let me undo that. Deselect. So I suggest that you just leave this set to source. The next option here is transparent, and I've never actually used it, but we've seen what it does when it's off, so let's take a look at what it does when you turn it on. Go ahead and select that, come down here and draw a selection. And we'll find that it actually does not remove the area here, but actually takes the original area and the new area and combines them together. So I'll drag this down here over the mole, and when I let go, we'll see that it actually blended the wrinkle and the mole together. I've never had a use for it myself, but now you know what it does, maybe you'll think up something. Let me go ahead and undo that, and I'll turn that off. The other option here is use pattern, and you would have to draw something first for the pattern to come up. So if I said use pattern, you can see what it did. It used the patterns to replace the eye bag, but it used the color from the skin. So again, nothing there's a whole lot of use for. So the whole key to this patch tool is number one, once you select the part you want to replace, you have to make sure that somewhere in this image there's enough good area for you to move that selection to. Now in that case I drew a little bit too big, so again I'll just draw a little bit closer. Now I don't want to get the eyelashes. You want to keep your selection as tight as you can around the area you're trying to get rid of, but you do need to leave a little bit of padding around that area and the edge of your selection. So with my cursor now on top of the selection, I click and drag it down to a good area. Again, sometimes you drag it down and you end up picking up something you don't want. It's not a big deal, for example. I could then come over here and use the healing brush to get rid of that. Just hit F12 here to reset it. Now if you want to get rid of the eye bag, let me show you a little better way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and select the eye bag. I'm going to select the bad. And I'm going to drag it to the good. And you can see that we've gotten rid of the eye bag. However, we've gotten rid of the eye bag completely, and that's not very realistic. As I mentioned, no matter how young and beautiful you are, if you smile, you're going to have a little bit of an eye bag there. So what would be nice would be if we could just bring back the eye bag just a little bit, just enough to make it believable. And we can do that with what's called the fade command. Now the fade command is located in the edit menu. As you can see right now it says fade patch selection. What the fade command does is allow you to fade the very last thing that you did. So if I had deselected, grabbed my brush tool and drew a black circle on her face, this would say fade the brush command. So the moral of the story is that if you want to use the fade command to fade your patch selection, you need to come to the fade command as soon as you use the patch tool. If I had even clicked on the canvas to deselect and get rid of that patch tool outline right there, the fade command would be grayed out right now. So as soon as you have made the patch selection and dragged it to the good, don't do anything else except come up here to the edit menu and choose fade patch selection. When you do, you'll see the fade dialog box pop up. Now by using the opacity slider here, you'll see that I can bring back the eye bag. If I turn it down to zero, it brings it back 100%. It's as if we didn't do anything at all. But if I put this down to something like 70%, somewhere around in there, we can see that we bring back the eye bag just a little bit, just enough to make it believable. As soon as you get something you like, hit OK. And now you can deselect. I can either click on the canvas or hit Control D to deselect. And now you can see that we've gotten rid of the eye bag just enough to make it believable. Now, although we got rid of the eye bag, we still have the dark area that's been left behind. So we'll come over here and get the dodge tool. So I'll come over here and use my bracket keys to get a brush big enough for the job. And since we're working on skin, be sure that protect tones is on. And I'll come and I'll just give it a click. I'd even give it one down there. So now we have a believable touch up here. I'll do the same thing over on the other eye. I'll grab the patch tool. Come over here. Select the eye bag. Drag down to the good, 
Immediately come up to the edit command and choose fade patch selection. Take that down to around 70% or so. Click OK. Deselect. Grab the dodge tool. And come over here and give it a pass. Maybe one up there in the corner of the eye and maybe I'll give it another little click right over there. Now I'm going to hit F12 and we'll see the before. And then I'll hit Control Z and that will undo F12 so we can see the after. Before and after. And that's a pretty good touch up there, and it's believable because we still see a little bit of the eye bag. Now let's jump over here to number four and take a look at a few other things we can do with the patch tool. Come down here, double click my zoom tool to go to 100%, holding my space bar down. One of the things that we can do is get rid of some of these flower petals on the ground. Again, this is a great use for the patch tool. You see something you don't like, circle the bad, drag it to the good. Circle the bad, drag it to the good. So you could fix up the floor if there's a lot of stains on the carpet, etc. As I said before, in order for the patch tool to work, we need to be able to completely encircle the area that we want to touch up. And we need to leave a little bit of padding between that area and our selection. Now this pedal next to this guy's foot is a perfect example of what we're not going to be able to do with the patch tool. For this to work, I not only need to be able to encircle that flower and leave a little bit of padding between it and my selection, there also has to be a little bit of padding between my selection and any items next to it. All I can do here is draw right next to his shoe. I can't get any type of padding between the flower and the shoe. So when I drag it to get rid of it, you see it pulls color from the shoe. So it works just like the healing brush. It's pulling color from the surrounding area. All three criteria need to be met. Select the flower completely, have a little space between it and the selection, plus have a little space between what you're trying to get rid of and any objects next to it. Here I have all three of those criteria being met, so when I click and drag it, it works. Now let me show you a couple other things that we can do right here. Here's some tape. I can select this. Notice I'm pretty close to that corner, not sure if it'll work. Yeah, it does. There must have been a pixel's worth of padding right there. Now, the other thing here is that there's a pattern. If you look, there's this pattern of wrinkles. So if I were to circle this piece of tape here and then drag it down to a smooth spot, you can see that we actually have an interruption in the pattern. We got a wrinkle here and wrinkle here, etc. So what you can do at that point is just circle the wrinkles and drag them down. And the way I do this if something doesn't blend in too well, I just keep circling and dragging, circling and dragging until the area blends in pretty good. Now, the one thing about the patch tools, you can actually see what you're going to get before you let go. You saw with the eye bag, if we drag the selection over to the mole, we could see that the mole was going to appear in the area where the eye bag used to be. So if I come over here to this piece of tape, or whatever this uh, spot is, and I try to get pretty tight on this. Of course, if I drag it down to here, got rid of it, but also got rid of that wrinkle right there. So what you can do is I'll slide it up. And before I let go, I can match up that wrinkle. Of course, it messed up a little bit here. I'll reselect that. Slide that down a little bit. And there you go, because I can see exactly what's going to happen. Let's come over here to his pinstripe jacket, and I'll grab my brush tool. And let's say we have a spot on his shirt, or on his jacket there. I can select it, and I can drag it down, and you see, I can match up the pinstripes there. Of course, if there was a spot here where the pinstripes actually bent, it'd be a little bit more difficult. So that wraps up our discussion of the patch tool. We've seen how it works, and again, it's one of my favorite tools. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look at the spot healing brush and the red eye tool. I'm going to throw the red eye tool in there because there's not much to it. You simply get it and click on red eye. That's all there is to it, and I don't want to have a separate lesson for it. It lasts about 30 seconds long. So we'll see you there.